We're told that inverse demand in a good year is given by 10 minus 0.1 QG, and inverse demand in a bad year is given by 10 minus 0.3 QB. The probability of having a good year is 40%, which means the probability of having a bad year must be 60%. The constant marginal cost of production is $3. And then it says, due to production delays, output must be produced before the firm knows whether or not it's going to be a good or a bad year. Well, if the firm did know whether or not it was going to be a good or bad year, we'd have 100% certainty of either situation. So this is why we're going to use that 40% and that 60% to make our best decision. And the question's asking, what quantity of wheat should be produced to maximize expected profit? So first, let's write our expected profit line, which it says the 40% that we think there's going to be a good year multiplied by the good year information, which is the price in a good year times the quantity in a good year, plus the 60% we think it's going to be a bad year multiplied by the information for a bad year, which is the price in a bad year times the quantity in a bad year. Now we subtract the marginal cost only multiplied by the quantity we expect to sell in a good year. And this is because when preparing for our cost, we want to prepare for the worst case scenario. Well, it is the best case scenario for a firm to have a good year, but cost-wise, the most cost would be incurred during a good year because you'd sell more units. So this goes back to our constraint, which makes sense, that says the quantity we sell in a good year must be greater than the quantity we sell in a bad year. So be careful when you're writing that profit function. There is no marginal cost associated with QB, only with QG. We're going to take this derivative with respect to QG, and we're going to take it with respect to QB, but first let's do QG. We leave the 40% outside the parentheses for the derivative's sake at first, just to make life a little easier. When we can, now we can distribute it through because we're going to have to. We get 4 minus 0.08 QG minus 3 is all equal to 0. We can combine like terms, moving the 0.08 to the other side and making it positive, and dividing through by 0.08, we get QG is equal to 12.5. Well, now we can take the derivative of the same profit function with respect to QB. This derivative is going to be a lot easier because there's not a marginal cost associated with QB. So we leave that 0.6 outside of the parentheses, again, 10 minus double the slope, 0.6 QB instead of 0.3 QB. And now we can divide both sides through by 0.6 to get rid of it. So the probability of a bad year does not affect the quantity we'll sell in a bad year. It doesn't affect our decision. If that was 0.9 or if that was 0.1, it just cancels because we divide both sides through and dividing zero by anything is gonna give us zero. So we can get rid of that 0.6 and we see that zero is equal to 10 minus 0.6 QB. Now we can move this around algebraically and divide through by 0.6 and we find that our quantity in a bad year is 16.67. We have to make sure that what we have found makes sense and that is the amount that we sell in a good year should be greater than the amount that we sell in a bad year or QG should be greater than QB. Since in our example it's not 12.5 is less than 16.67 the constraint is broken. When the constraint is broken we need to go back and plug in Q everywhere we saw QG or QB in our original profit function. So doing this, now we're ready to take the derivative with respect to just Q. We do that, we can combine like terms and we can now distribute through the 0.4 and the 0.6 into our parentheses and get 4 minus 0.08Q plus 6 minus 0.36Q minus 3 all equals 0. We can combine like terms and solve for Q. Adding 0.44Q to each side and dividing through by 0.44, we see the quantity that we want to produce to maximize profits, in this case, is 15.91.